So, Master Rank Cold Teroth is out, and she is a little bit different than uh, Master Rank High Rank Cold Teroth. Uh, although I think Arc Temper Cold Teroth P1 runs was uh, was more challenging and more fun. But nevertheless, this is a video more focused on solo runs, Master Rank Cold Teroth. So, uh, the video will start around 5 minutes guys, and there will be builds at 5 minutes ish and 10 minutes ish around there. There's two builds in this video, we're mainly using the light bow gun. Now, with that out of the way, uh, there's some key points here, about 5 minutes of it, uh, which I think are very important in the fight. Which is, utilize wall banks, tenderize her. This is master rank iceborne mechanics now, uh, so it's different, don't think it's all oh, it's old cove. We did P1s for days, so it was super easy. Uh, her hit zones favor physical damage over elemental now. So when she has the mantle on, thunder damage is what you want, and then she starts glowing and it melts, right? And you do more thunder damage. But physical damage or raw damage is more preferred. Now, if you do have shot damage, uh, shoot the chest. The chest is where you get the best hit zones from it. Now, if you want to break her horns, you can roll that sweeper beam, by the way, as you saw me do consistently as well. And once you get down in its zone 4, uh, I would recommend wall bang her immediately, so she enrages, and then you can put her to sleep and uh, wake her up and wall bang her again. Boom, voila, and then you work on the mount from there. Now, okay, so I was talking about his little mouse. Ice, uh, when she's unclothed, uh, when you unrobe sexy cove, uh, you, you want to use ice ammo or high raw. Um, forearms, head, and chest are good places for good, good damage with several weapons. And if I remember correctly, I think it's blunt for the tail. I might not be right about this. Also, when you get to st stage 2, which is zone 3, if you're used to P1 runs, um, you want to wallbang her twice here and then drop the pillar on her. Because if you just drop the pillar on her immediately, the she will enrage. She will, yeah, she will enrage, and there's no wallbangs, and you're missing out on some free damage. And I'm not sure about this. I haven't tested it or paid that much attention to it, but well, I think. I'm speculating here. I think wall banging her deals damage to her horns. Because I have, as you saw in the beginning of the video, uh, I wall banged her and her horns flew off. Now, it looked like the boulder missed there or pillar, but it didn't. It clipped the tail. So now she's down for the count here. I'm not sure what the fuck happened there, but I got knocked the fuck away. I'm just gonna blame my palico. Oh, it's the Galajakas. Yeah, yeah. Sneaky Galajakas. So this is a good opportunity to get your true shard slash in. Uh, plant the bombs, plant the Vivern Blast bombs and the Mega Barrel bombs if you're into that or you want to do that. It's not, you just, it's just a good option to deal damage for, to the tail and the head horn, head horns? The horn heads. <laughs> um, alright. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, equip uh, the Palico with uh, the sleep uh, weapon. The Palico sleep weapon. So if you're like a melee, uh, when you get to zone 2 and 3, and you can't uh, apply sleep to cold by shooting her. Uh, go back to the tent and put the bond ball on. And your palico, if you're lucky, will put cold to sleep in stage two and three for you. And then you can put bombs down and blow her up, and then wall bang her when on wake up and stuff for extra goody goody damage. Uh, also, if you're a great sword, great sword man, great sword main, I guess. Uh, in stage 2 and 3, and even in stage 1, there are ledges for you to do aerial damage, and you can mount Cove more than once. It's pretty easy to get 3 and 4 mounts. I think. I've done it. Although this is not the video for that, or I'm not showcasing that in this video. I'm just... I got some, you know, some, some nice clips, or no, I don't even know if they're that nice. So it was... You know, the run we're about to get into here is not that great. I die 3 times or 2 times, and I get revived by the fucking aloe vera kitty jelly. I play horribly. But that's what I wanted. I wanted to show that you can solo call with a light bow gun. Where we're rocking sticky for stage 1 and uh, ice for stage 2 and 3. Uh, and it's not that difficult. It took me 18 minutes, which is fine. Or 17 minutes and something seconds. Almost 18 minutes. You know, I don't remember. Just, alright. So here, here we're in the tent and we're just throwing on the, the sleep ball for the palico. Uh, I, I think that's a useful tip. You can also bring the paralysis. Uh, if... if uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe for stage 1, and then you go back to stage 2 and 3. So, you get down to stone 3 here, and then you wall bang her, and she will be angry. And then you can, I don't know, tenderize her tail, and work on mount damage. And put her to sleep, and send her into the wall, and then she wakes up, and... Alright, I'm talking backwards here, but yeah. Then, once you get the mount in stone 4... 
Hopefully you've already broken our horns, but if you haven't, then, uh, you know, maybe you'll get the last bit of damage in that you need to break her horns. Uh, if you have teammates here, she will always run to the opposite wall, so when Kolv runs away from you to the first wall, you can run over to the opposite wall that looks like the one in front of us, and you can put down Mega Barrel Bombs if you have three friends. And she will fucking headbang <laughs> those Mega Barrel Bombs, and yeah, here you go, so we started at 5.30. This is the run. We're using the Aqua Shot, Safi Jeeva Sticky Blower. <laughs> you can also use for the uh, elemental type ammo. You can also use the QR Blitz Thunder, and it shoots ice ammo and thunder ammo. Although I would spec it differently for stage one and two and three. So here's the information for the build, I guess, stick the sticky build, um, it's nothing special, you've probably seen this exact build uh, elsewhere. Now, if you're asking why I don't run airplugs and all that stuff, um, I honestly don't know the the sticky cap and how fast you reach it, so I just slapped an agitator and like offensive skills and didn't bother with airplugs, I'm like, ah, whatever, I'll just ro I'll try and roll most of it and if not, I'll just eat the, the war. So you get, you're gonna get quite a bit of KO damage uh, and stuns in the beginning because I'm shooting the head and I don't really give a shit. Uh, I'm not saving it for later. I just uh, want, I'm, I'm kind of trying to chip her horn so it falls off so I can carve it. Although if it does fall off here, I'm pretty sure I ran away and forgot because <laughs> I just wanted to kill her. There you go, she fell over again. Another KO, that's two KOs, pretty fast. Also, I do recommend, in the beginning of the fight, you clutch claw, you roll her roar, you roll her roar, and you clutch claw her, and turn her into the wall with the flinch shot the mechanic. Kultra is busy being a spetsnaz there, roll, drop roll and put out that fire. And um, yeah, I'm just putting down bombs, reloading, hoping she rolls over them, uh, trying to KO her with the headshots, ship her horns. Also, if you notice in the ceiling, there are those wedge beetles, uh, so you can fly up there with a great sword or a hammer, drop down, build mount damage, use the ledges around you, and the, even the vine walls. If you're on a controller, you can uh, go into the vine wall uh, and hit the... Is it the B button? I play with inverter controls when it comes to that, so for me it's the the A button on the Xbox controller. That's how I jump off the wall, and you can just hit right trigger on most weapons. Oh, well, it depends really, but like if you have a longsword and you have Spirit Blade level one, uh, you can uh, jump off the vine wall and hit right trigger, and you'll do the fucking the, th the three slices in the air, and you'll build mount damage. Now, if you don't have Spirit Blade active, if you haven't got level one yet or higher. It will just be one slash and it's pretty shit. <laughs> so, but the launch mode is mediocrely actually okay at building mount damage by spamming ledges, rolling off ledges, uh, flying off mountain, fine walls. It's not good for wedge beetles though. You can do it, but it's very slow. Um, yeah, so we just chipped her horn there. It flew off, I saw. Did it? No, maybe it didn't. She's a Spetsnaz, drop, shock, and roll, drop, shop, or whatever. <laughs> she really likes spamming that roll. It's really annoying. Yeah, no, we did ship her horn. It's right there. I, st I actually prefer uh, our tempered Kul Taroth. Uh, now, uh, do I think they're going to make an arc tempered Master and Kulturoth? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think they will. Uh, like, I would. Yeah, I would have preferred if she had the arc tempered moves as well, which is the. Hmm. I feel like she had a different sweeper beam, and that's what I'm missing. All right, so we dealt we dealt enough damage with the to her, so she went and uh, disrobed. Now we're gonna head back to camp and swap over to the ice gun. Although you don't need to do that, I am 100% certain that you can uh, use the sticky gun all the way through. And the sticky gun can po- it, uh, it can't- can it poison? I don't remember. But it can paralyze and sleeper. So uh, uh, you 
can just use the Paralyze and Sleep and get that out of the way. And then go swap to the Ice Gun if you want to. Uh, it's, you know, it's your solo run. You, you do what you prefer. This is how I did it. Uh, I ran this build six times. Killed her six times in a row. This was the worst time I got. So I figured I'd throw this one up on, on YouTube. Hopefully it's more relatable to some of you guys. You're like, oh man, I can't beat Cold Terra because she's so hard. I mean, she's spicy. Here you go, it's the second build. Up and running. Uh, I wanted to fit it all in one screen, but I don't have enough fucking video tracks to do that in, in my old ass editing software, so <laughs> it's the best I can do. Uh, I'll try and work on that in the future. Alright, so now we're entering zone 3, st stage 2. I'm confusing myself and you guys probably here. I'm gonna try and get the wall bang. Put on temporal mantles so I can force the wall bang through the fire. And uh, bang, she gets uh, thrown in the wall for the good damage. The good damages. And uh, now we're just shooting her with poison ammo to get that free damage. And uh, she's doing the Great Jagras slam fake. Because she, she has the Great Jag Greatest Jagras slam now. But she also has that head bop slam. I don't know what to call it. Alright, so now we're going for the second wall bang in stage 2, which is zone 3. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to say here. I'll be like, I feel like I need to say both now. <laughs> All right, she just went enraged, and uh, I'm just trying to get her under the boulder now, which is why I'm over here shooting, spamming. I'm also not doing a good job shooting her chest, I because I kind of want to try and get the horn breaks, uh, <laughs> just because it means more, more loot. All right, the pillar did hit her there, although that wasn't fucking easy to see. But she's knocked over now, so now I get some free damage on her head if that's what you want, or if you're trying to break the tail, and you know, if you have some friends, maybe two of them go for the tail, two go for the horns, if she still has the horns. But uh, I really do recommend tenderizing her, her forearms, her head, her tail, uh, even her chest. You can tenderize her chest for that good damage. Now, when, if you do get fucked here, like I just did, uh, and you're dead. <laughs> I was trying to say is you can lay down so if you don't touch your controller once you get knocked over There's a maximum of time where you can just be laying there in the fire without taking any damage and Then uh, you know uh, your character will get up on, on on its own eventually and then you just spam dive evades You might survive something like a lasting fire effect on the floor that will uh, pretty much deplete your HP kind of fast It depends on your fire resistance really, but if you're an idiot like me that likes full offensive skill and the only defensive skill you'll ever fucking consider is H HP boost level 3 or 2 because you're just a greedy asshole that don't like defensive skills at all, I I, <laughs> I just don't like them. You know, you do you and I'll, I'll do me and uh, you know, I'm not going to be like, uh, don't use that or blah blah blah, but I'm just be like, I'm not going to use that <laughs> and then, you know. That's that's just how I am. I'm, uh, you know, it's, maybe it's f flawed logic. I just like the damages, and you know, I think the more damage I can do, the faster the monster will die, and you know, the less time I will spend fucking killing the monster because the more damage I do and stuff like that. But when you play badly and you fucking have to spend the entire fight running in circles, healing all the time, using mega potions because you're barely alive because you're greedy and just getting hit and playing poorly, or you just have bad monster energy or something. Uh, you don't have a good run and the monster fight drags on anyway, so you might as I don't know, it's, it's give and take, right? Alright, so I'm trying to build some mount damage here because <laughs> I felt like it, actually. I'm, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I start getting mount damage here or even mounter in stage 2, because I'm like, why not? But, uh, what I do suggest, what you do instead is maybe get like 2 and 3 hops on her here. Save the mount for stage 4, or the last zone, and then just continuously spray her chest if you just want her dead, if, you don't, if you're not trying to break the horns. I think I did this because I wanted to break the horns. Now, I don't remember because I did this uh, on release, and today is a few days later, <laughs> late at night. I, uh, I, I worked a lot to get this video out on release, but then I got burnt the fuck out. On editing, and I, you know, I, I, I did everything, and I was just like, oh, I just have to do the voice commentary. And uh, oh, my screen off. No, don't do that. I can't see. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. 
So, uh, I think we wall banged her and she's KO'd and drooling and we're putting down the bombs and shooting her in the face now or in the horns because I want the horns, I'm trying to get the horns. And now we got another wall bang off. Well, we're getting a lot of stuff done in stage 2 here. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if the horns fly off soon. Maybe not. I don't remember what actually happens. She's angry now. She'd be doing the swipes. And she's moving up. So we didn't break the horns, which is fine. I'm sure I get the horns. <laughs> I hope. Ah, I don't remember. Now, you can spend the time looting or you can spend the time killing. It's up, it's up to you, you know, the, you might... There are DPS checks in every stage. And uh, there was one thing I actually was really strange. I'm actually not sure what happened. Because uh, my first ever kill on her was at 21 minutes. But then the next time I fought her, I'm like, oh, this is easy. I killed her 21 minutes. Uh, the next time I fought her, she left at 18. And it was in stage 4. And that run felt better. So I'm like, are there multiple DPS checks per stage? And she will leave at 18 minutes something if you don't do enough damage in that one particular stage? Or did the timer glitch? Or what the fuck happened? I don't know. I've, it never happened again. Alright, so we got the wall bang, and she instantly did the enragement, and I went back and just tenderized or did like one cholesterol attack because she's like, she does, she's like Safaji, but she doesn't take any damage when she does that move. So if you want to deal any amount of damage on her during that, uh, drop poison bombs on her or do the clutch claw thing or mega bombs. But mega barrel bombs are annoying because you put them, so she's paralyzed now. Uh, the mega barrel bombs are annoying because you have to put them down and then punch them or shoot them. And it knocks you away if you're too close, and it takes fucking forever. So uh, don't use the mega barrel bombs unless you have a good reason to, I guess. There you go. The horns flew off. So yeah, I guess I can see what I'm doing here in this run. Mostly, I'm like I'm trying to like shoot head, chest, and then head, head, and then I'm trying to shoot chest a little bit, and then I'm shooting the head once I have the opportunity. When I don't have the opportunity to shoot the head, I'm trying to shoot the chest through her body, through her legs, through her tail. Uh, did we just break the tail? I don't know. Something broke. <laughs> now she's drooling, so it's a pretty nice opportunity to do a clutch claw attack, I guess. Uh, so she's standing there for longer. But then the roof decides to fuck you. Thank you, Capcom, for your RNG and your game that already has RNG. I swear, this is the RNG simulator on top of. So I got a good idea. Let's just have random shit fall from the ceiling while you're fighting the monster. I've died to that in our tempered cold, by the way. This is triggering memories. I'm, I'm actually slightly annoyed. When I saw that, just hit me there. I, I was playing the bow a lot on this zone, this this last zone on our Temper Cove. When we were doing those P1s and P2s and P3s. <laughs> Although P2 and P3, I think is... Alright, here's a pro tip, by the way. When she goes up here and does this spicy move, when Cove comes down again from the pillar, don't do this. Sheath your weapon when she goes up. And wait until she comes down again. You see her start going down or, or go down. Dive evade. If you dive evade, you'll survive that every time. If you don't dive evade, it's random and it takes a lot of health from you. So if you don't have helpless level 3 and you get hit by that, I don't know if you die, but I had helpless level 3 and got hit by it and survived. And that was 80% of my health gone. So, but I later learned just dive evade it. Every time you see her go back down from the pillar, and what the heck? Something fell. Uh, you will never get hit by that ceiling falling on you. <laughs> All right, so we've died what twice now, and time is kind of running out. DPS checks and all that lovely stuff. How did something fall? I don't know. I'm sitting still. Like I moved my elbow a little bit. So now you have to slide all the way back. So it's pretty painful when you die. You lose a lot of time. I realized that uh, this run. I'm like, man, you're losing a lot of time dying all this time. Although, you know, it's not even 15 minutes yet. But we, we've, we've died twice, I think. And we used the revive gel. Now, I uh, honestly, I don't know anymore. I, I've talked so much and uh, I don't have key no notes I'm talking about, which I should do because it's more professional. And I'm just literally sitting here looking at the screen, trying t t to tell you guys some, some, some useful information. Like, I don't think Master and Kul'Taroth is hard, but I do understand if you think Master and Kul'Taroth is hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe this video will help you, which is why I'm making it. I, I do hope it will help somebody. Uh, now, if you, let's say you don't have the Safajiva um, sticky bow gun, 
the light bow gun. You can use the Devil Joe one, rapid fire. Uh, that one will do pretty well. It does good damage. And there's another one too that's pretty good. But I don't remember the name of it right now. Oh, the Rajang one. Yeah, the Ray Rajang or Rajang. I call it Rajang. Rajang sticky bow gun is also really good for sticky ammo level 3. If you use a Devil Joe one though, I would use rapid uh, fire sticky. So I think it's that. It's level 2. Pretty sure that's level 2. That one shoots 3 stickies of level 2 per shot, which is pretty nice. Now, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get the mount here soon, and then it's over uh, fairly shortly after that. I don't 100% alright. So she goes up here now. Now, I'll just recommend she's your weapon instead of being a greedy asshole. I have to pull mantle, so I'm probably just gonna eat this. Oh, it missed actually. And then when she drops down, just uh, dive it. And you also need to keep an eye on her because she's really fast. Sometimes she'll be right on you when she hops down and she'll like, run up to you or she'll be kind of close to you and she'll try to snipe you with fire beams from across the room. So it's it's kind of it's kind of dangerous. Uh, I had the uh, full HP on my bow build. You can roll that sweeper beam. Sweeper beam. Uh, not <sighs> and she one shot me. Here I am, be like, shoot the chest, idiot. Just shoot the chest. That's where the good damage is. <laughs> with your ice ammo. But yeah, the surprising thing is uh, how susceptible she is to raw damage. Just f fucking put on your charge blade and unga bunga all over, her, man. Strap it on, blow her up with some elemental no, uh, the explosive files. <laughs> oh god, what are they called? I don't remember. Mm. All right, so the support mantle's off. We have the invasion mantle. Oh my god, she likes that move. Alright, she wants to spam gold on you and kill you with the ceiling. Don't look up at the ceiling. Alright, apparently I rolled it. Oh, this is a new move and it's super annoying. Uh, you can dive evade it and you can roll it. The, it's a lot later than you think it is. Uh, I noticed that when I learned, uh, like, oh, you can roll this. <laughs> uh, same thing with the foresight slash on the longsword. Um, you kind of have to wait, kind of late, pretty late until you foresight slash you or uh, you'll just get hit by the move or you'll be you won't even the other thing that happens with the foresight slash these days is because they changed it how it works uh, I swear it glitches out but uh, at least they changed how it works so what happens a lot with the foresight slash now is uh, so we dive it again is um, if you're in the wrong spot and you're not close enough or the attack is not close enough to you. Nothing happens. You just move in and out and you don't get hit. Although it should have registered in my opinion. You just move in and out. You burn your whole thing. And um, you don't get the ching. So. Uh, which is why it feels like now with the foresight slash. You always have to wait until the last possible second. Which is not the case. You just have to do it in the right spot. And then kind of like move your like bubble of foresight slash towards the danger. And get the chink. And then try and on the return all right she's dead uh, on the return try and move back out and connect with a hit because you can you, you can move pretty weirdly with the foresight slash with the joysticks but you know what guys that was everything i had to show you for today uh, i'll try and come up with another uh build video of i don't know hammer or something switch axe uh, also, you should carve the horns first if you're close because you have to wait for Kul Thiroth to die and watch the whole animation and wait for her to fall over and it's uh, <laughs> it can kind of like mess you up and you don't have time to carve everything if that happens to you sometimes. So run to the horns first, carve them, then run back and carve Kul, uh, at least because I, I, yeah, sometimes I didn't have enough time so uh, and that's because I waited for Kul to fall over instead of running over to the horns yeah but that is everything i have to show you guys uh thank you much for watching and uh, i'll see you next time good bye